Hi everybody, this is section 1-5 um, for our Math 211 Geometry class and it's going to talk about angles and their measures. Right, so this section deals with angles. We haven't really talked about any angles yet. We've dealt with mainly lines and segments. So um, here is another defined term. You can add this to your defined term sections in your notebook. Um, our definition is going to be of an angle. And an angle consists of two different rays with a common endpoint. Um, so here we go. We have a picture over here of an angle. So our angle is right here. Here are our two rays. We have ray AC and AB. Um, the rays are the sides of the angle. And the common endpoint is always considered the vertex of the angle. So they don't always have to draw a point there, but it's where the two rays meet. And that is called the vertex of your angle. Um, point A is the vertex of this angle. And again, we talked about the sides of the rays. Now, when you name an angle, there's several different ways you can name it. Um, you can sometimes just name it by its vertex. So you could call it angle A. Or they put a number in this one to um, delineate the angle. So you could call it angle 1. Or most of the time, we're going to use three letters. We're going to use two points on the rays and then the vertex. When you do name an angle like this, so this is angle CAB. Notice the vertex always of your angle has to be in the middle. So when you name it by three letters, the vertex is always in the middle. So we can do angle CAB or angle BAC. But the vertex has to be in the middle when you name it by the three letters. Um, here are just some more terms which you're familiar with, I'm sure. Um, just It's good to bring them up and talk about them. We will be talking about, when we look at angles, the interior of the angles and the exterior of an angle. Um, the interior, remember I think of interior decorating, you decorate the inside. So the interior is always the inside of the angle. And the exterior is anything that would be outside of that angle. So it's any points that are not in the interior of the angle and are not on the angle, that's going to be your exterior. Or I think of exit, outside, exterior, that would be the um, outside of the angle. Okay, so here we have a picture of an angle or a couple different angles. Um, and I want you to take a second, see if you can tell me how many different angles are in the diagram. And then using... Um, on your notes, write two other ways to name angle one. And pause the video while you do that, and then come back and we'll go over it. Okay, welcome back. Hopefully, um, you answered these two questions and we'll go over them now. So how many different angles are in the diagram? If we look at this diagram. I can see we have angle one, which they've named angle one, and then we also have angle two. So that's two different angles, but those two angles can also make up a third angle. So in total, we have three angles in the diagram. All right, now for the second question, they want us to name angle one two other ways if i were to go and i want to do this and talk about it because it's a common mistake people make all right if i'm looking at this here is i'm going to erase my markings that i made okay here is angle one right here all right so we're looking at this angle we want to name it two different ways they called it angle one because they put a one in there so we could do that now, if I name it one way, if you said angle P, it's a good start, but it is not a correct name for the angle because angle P, because we have two adjacent or connected angles here, I do not know what angle they're talking about if I just say angle P. So in this case, this is a time where I said we would have to name it by three letters. So angle P won't work, but we can call it angle M. PN, or we can reverse it, and we can also call it angle NP. 
PM. So those are the two other ways we can name it. We can't just use angle P because again, P is the vertex um, for multiple angles here. So we don't know which exactly what you were talking about if you just say angle P. Okay, so here um, we're going to talk about measuring angles. And again, this is probably a review for you guys, but a lot of you um, are education majors, so you'll be going into the classroom. And one thing that you will definitely be doing is using protractors to help measure angles. So in order to measure an angle, we use a protractor um, as part of your school supplies. So hopefully you guys have one and attached to this lesson is a sheet of angles that you can print out and practice measuring. Um, when we measure angles, we measure it in degrees. And if you take a look here, um, I like this picture because it shows you how to measure an angle. Most of your protractors will have a center and that's where you line up your vertex. And then you pick one of the two rays and you line it up with zero on your protractor. And then if you notice, mine has two sets of numbers. My bottom ray right here is pointing, you always want it to point to a zero. It starts on the inside zero. So I'm gonna use the inside numbers when I measure my angle and I'm gonna count up and the other ray crosses over at 30 degrees. So this angle measures 30 degrees. If I were measuring an angle and I started with my vertex here and my bottom ray went to the left, that means my zero is on the outside. So when I'm measuring my angle, I would use the outside numbers, and this one would be about, I would say, 52 degrees. Um, all protractors are a little bit different, so practice with yours. And then if you see others, it's good to just kind of take a look at them and practice with them. Because um, I found from being in the classroom in the past that if you have students purchase their protractors, they get all different kinds. So it's good to be familiar with how to use all different protractors. Um, so here we just, they have the protractor postulate, which is similar to um, just finding the distance here. So anytime you have an angle, instead of matching it up to a number line, we're going to match it up to um, parts of a protractor. And that's how you can find how many degrees your angle is. So here, and again, we always start at zero. So this one really don't need the absolute value as much, but you know, ray AB is zero degrees and ray CA is 125 if we use the inside. So the measure would be 125 degrees. Um, here we are just reviewing how to classify angles. Again, this is a good review for everybody. Um, we have different types of angles. You have an acute angle, which again, they say, oh, it's acute, it's, or it's cute. Think babies, puppies, they're cute because they're little. Acute angles are always between zero and 90 degrees. So they can't be 90 degrees, so they have to be between zero and 90. If you have an angle that measures zero, it's not an angle, it's a line. So um, it has to be between zero and 90 degrees. That would be an acute angle. And then we've already spoken about right angles. Right angles equal only 90 degrees. Up next we have obtuse angles and obtuse angles are between 90 and 180. So they have to be between 90, greater than 90, but less than 180 to be obtuse. And then our final angle was one we'll talk about quite a bit is a straight angle, which is going to be your straight line. And a straight angle, if you have that point in the middle to make it two opposite rays is always going to equal 180 degrees. All right, so here we're just looking at the protractor and they want us to find that little M there stands for the measure of angle RQM. So if I am looking, here's R, here's Q and here's M. So if I highlight it, here's the measure or here's angle RQM. It's going to start at zero and go up to 45 degrees, they marked it there. So if it's 45 degrees, would it be acute, right, obtuse, or straight? Hopefully you said acute, because it is an acute angle. All right, let's find, and I'm gonna erase that one so we can look. All right, next, 
Let's find the measure of angle R, Q, S. So here is R, Q, and S. So there's our angle, this whole angle here. And as we can see, it starts at zero on the right, goes up to 90 degrees. Since it's exactly 90 degrees, that's going to make it a right angle. All right, and then our last one, I'm going to erase that one real quick, is angle, the measure of R, Q, N. So here is R to Q to N. So we're looking at this whole angle right here, and we can see that's 165 degrees, so that's going to make that an obtuse angle. All right, just like we talked about before, um, with we talked about segments, now we're going to talk about angles. Um, if we have two angles that have the same measure, they are congruent. And again, we use the equal sign with the little wave atop for congruent. Um, if we have congruent angles, we will mark them with arcs. So a lot of the times you'll see angles marked with one arc, it means they're congruent. Or if you have two arcs in each angle, that means those angles are congruent. Um, again, knowing the difference. If we are talking about the measure of an angle, and like right here, they told us each angle is 30 degrees. So then they become equal because we know a number to it. And when we write them as equal, we put a little m, so lowercase m, so it would be the measure of angle A is equal to the measure of angle B. When you do congruent, if we just know that they're um, the same because of arc marks, it would just be angle A is congruent to angle B. You don't need the little m, and you need the congruent symbol. Okay, so here they give us a picture, they give us some different angles, and they just want us to answer the questions. So take a second and look at the picture, answer the questions, pause the video, and then when you come back, we'll go over it. Okay, so hopefully um, you've answered the questions. So here we are talking about the measure of angle C. If the measure of angle C is 45 degrees, they want us to find D. So here with C, it has one arc. D also has one arc. So that means they're congruent. So if C is 45 degrees, then D would also be 45 degrees. And then for B, they tell us the measure of angle 3 is 113 degrees. Find the measure of angle 4. 3 has two arc marks, and 4 has two, so that means they're congruent, so that would also be 113 degrees. Um, next, we have our last postulate that we will look at for this section, and it is our angle addition postulate. It's very similar to the segment addition postulate, um, and basically what it says, if we have P on the interior of angle ABC. So basically we have ray BP here, and that's dividing up this large angle of ABC into two other angles. Then if I take the measurements of the two smaller angles, so if I take the measurement of ABP plus the measurement of PBC and add them together, I'll get the measurement of this entire big angle. So let's just do one practice problem using our angle addition postulate. Um, here, they tell us that angle DEG is a right angle. So automatically you should say, okay, right angle, I know that that is always going to be 90 degrees. And they want us to use this information to find the measure of DEF, angle DEF, and angle FEG. So I know that angle DEF is equal to 3x plus 5. And if I add the other angle, FEG, it is 10x minus 6. And together, they form 90 degrees. So we're going to make them equal to 90. Now I just need to solve my equation. So I'll simplify it first. 3x plus 10x will give me 13x. 5 minus 6 will give me a negative 1. 
and it equals 90. So then we will add 1 to both sides. So I get 13x equals 91 divided by 13. And we get x is going to equal, um, 13 goes into 91 seven times. So now I have x, but I'm not done because I need to find the measures of these two angles. So I'll take my 7 and go back and plug it in. So I will do 3 times 7 plus 5. So it's going to give me 21 plus 5, and that'll make it 26 degrees for angle DEF. And then the other one, we'll do 10 times 7 minus 6. So we get 70 minus 6, and that's going to give me 64 degrees. And um, then again, you can check it. If I add 26 and 64, it will also give me 90 degrees, which is what my two angles add to. That's it for section 1-5. Have a great day, guys.